Angie, thank you so much for helping us today. We're looking, as you know, at the whole area of trust and betrayal. And I'm looking for something creative that we can bring in to give people a little bit of hope or something that they can hold on to. And of course, my mind goes straight to stones and then from there to you. So you've given it a little bit of thought. Tell us what you might have come up with. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you for having me here. And it's um, such a big subject, isn't it? And and often I find that people come into the room and they are not feeling great and in a difficult place, maybe a bit hopeless. I might lay like a few stones out in front of them, like I've got here, just to give them something physical in front of them. They're just normal stones to them. They've just been washed and allowed to dry. And then just say to them, just have a look at the stones. They're all very natural and possibly a little bit like us as we come into the room. I use a small water spray. That's all it's got in is water. I've got a little one here. And I would just spray across the top of them. I don't know if you can see straight away. They start to change colour. You can see them change from being quite dull and quite lifeless sometimes to being quite vibrant. They almost look polished. And the beauty of it is each stone suddenly looks very unique. And just by having someone there with you, that discussion, that time to talk about things allows us to feel refreshed. So then you can start talking about their unique qualities and how we can find that hope again. Well, that's beautiful. It does transform them, doesn't it? Thank you for that, Angie. Any other ideas that you might share? Using a stone, there's something about holding it in your hand. And again, when we find someone who really is in that depth of feeling completely hopeless, sometimes using the stone maybe as a transitional object, or even just as you put your hand out, laying it in the centre of your hand, with a word on it saying hope. Mm. And just talking to them about how that might feel if they're holding it. Mm. Mm. What that might change in their body, what that might change in their mind, mm. maybe their heart, their breathing. Mm. Talk about their gut reaction. And if they cannot hold it, if they cannot even pick it up today, that I can hold hope for them and what that might feel like. That's beautiful. And then... I guess we might ask them, what, what is it like to think of me holding the hope for you? What would that mean? It often just leads on to that conversation of what hope is. Obviously, I'm working with lots of different people and sometimes we look in, and draw into their faith. Other times it might be a value that they hold. Hope might not be what they really think it is. Mm. So they're holding on to some rule that they can't be happy or that they can't agree with hope. Suddenly having it tangible makes all the difference. I love that. Mm. And maybe one more, Angie, have you got another goodie with the world of stones for us? I'm going to lay out a few in front of you just so you can see some of the ones that I've done in the past and actually varnished. What have you bound them with, Angie? I've used things that I've had around the house. So there's this, this one is of embroidery cotton and you can see it's got all its colours. This one has got like a copper wire that you can get from the floristry department okay and this one actually is silver wire that you might use in jewelry making have you varnished over the wire i have varnished over the wire to hold it in place when we're thinking about hope and about trust what i like to do is use a natural stone like we were looking at before and the wire separately and then ask the client whether they can hold the wire and start to wrap it around the stone and as they're wrapping, maybe talk about the difficulties, the, the issues in life, the things that are binding them up, that are causing them to be just unable to find that hope or that trust or maybe the issues that come between them and someone mm. and to keep going, keep binding. Sometimes they find it difficult. Sometimes they want to undo it. It's also about their story. Mm. But it's basically as you're doing it, you're almost creating a new object they may see some of the silver linings from where things have been bound wow that's such a powerful thing to give people something to do as they're talking can often release more words do you find mm. 
Absolutely, because as they start going, it feels like a timeline almost. They're, they're talking about mm. the different things that have come up and they've gone and, and they've gone through this and then they, oh, hold on a minute, that was that was a little bit further. That was before that, yeah. Oh, and then, then I'm going to tell you about that bit. I really need to tell you about that bit. It depends on the person whether they actually want to completely bind it up or whether they want to undo it completely and you know, set the stone free effectively. Actually, this stone, if it's wound with a silver wire, it is proper silver jewellery wire, wow. and it becomes more precious being wound up in this silver thread. And we honour the client's story, don't we? We hold the treasure of everything they've been through that is is shaping them and transforming them. Can I just show you one more, Pauline? Of course, of course. <laughs> So as we looked at the, the natural stones before, this is another natural stone, but this one's quite a smooth stone. You see, it's not, not varnished or polished in any way. Just as an exercise to do with someone, I might suggest that they hold the stone and then maybe use some oil or maybe some hand cream, depends on what you have. I've got some lavender essential oil, which I know I wouldn't use for some clients, but for myself. I find that really relaxing oh, wow. and you can see straight away how it changes. Yeah. But the mixture of the sensory holding in your hand, the scent, the oil, wow. and just being able to move it through your hands as you're talking, as you're sharing and offering can be so soothing and comforting. That's it's tapping into something. Beautiful. And would you let them keep that then? Would you let them take that away? I'd invite them to take it if they'd like to and um, to carry on if they've got some oils or hand creams at home or maybe a fragrance oil they'd like to use. All the time offering, seeing what feels right because sometimes they might like to leave it in the safety of the room yes. and other times they enjoy the transitional object to help them carry on through the week. Angie, they're wonderful ideas. Thank you. And it may have triggered other ideas that people get as they have seen you working in this way. I'm so grateful to you. That's a, a lovely thing you've shared with us. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for inviting me to share, Pauline.